quadratic trig equation, what we mean is an equation which involves a trig term which is squared. So let's consider that cos x equals a half graph again and think about what happens if I square the cos term. Now remember convention dictates that when we square a trig term we write the squared straight after the trigonometric function. So cos squared x. So cos squared x equals a half. So what happens when we change a graph from being y equals cos x to y equals cos squared x? Well the squared is outside the bracket, that means it's affecting the y coordinates, so all of the y coordinates in the initial graph will be squared. So you'll know that 0 squared is 0 and 1 squared is 1. So anywhere on the initial graph that has a y coordinate of 0 or a y coordinate of 1, we'll still have a y coordinate of 0 or a y coordinate of 1 on the new graph. But the big change is that any negative y coordinates will become positive y coordinates when they're squared. So the graph of cos squared x really looks like this. So what does that mean for solutions to the equation cos squared x equals a half? Well it actually means we're going to have a solution in quadrants 1, 2, 3 and 4. So between 0 and 360 there are four well defined solutions to the equation cos squared x equals a half. Let's go into our notes and do a bit of practice of solving quadratic trig equations algebraically and we'll see exactly how our solutions should be presented. This is 4.5 quadratic trig equations. We can abbreviate trigonometric down to trig because it's ridiculous to write quadratic trigonometric equations. Okay, so again I'm just going to go straight into an example, example 4.5a. There will be two examples in this video. Yeah, four, five, I don't see, this is because I'm saying two examples, I've written b, 4.5a. There will be a 4.5a and I will follow it with a 4.5b. So, uh, 4.5a will be this. Solve. Let's do 3 tan squared x, subtract 9 equals 0. And we'll do it for 0 is less than or equal to x is less than 2 pi. Which tells us my final answers have to be in radians. Okay, solution will be as follows. We'll write the example out first. 3 tan squared x subtract 9 equals 0. So we know it's quadratic because it's got the squared, the tan squared x term. So here is how we go about solving this. Um, there is no other tan term. There's no other trig term. There's only the one term. That means we can rearrange this to isolate the trig term as we usually would. And it's perfectly valid to do that. So tan squared x equals minus 9 comes over and becomes positive 9. And we divide by 3. Well, 9 over 3 actually simplifies to just give me 3. So tan squared x equals 3. Now, I don't think that trig term is isolated yet because I've got tan x times by itself here. That's tan x times tan x. But the way I can remedy that is I can do the opposite of squaring. The opposite operation to squaring is taking the square root. But in higher maths, when you solve something squared equals a number, you have to remember that there's two possibilities. It could be positive root 3 or it could be negative root 3. Okay, so when you take the square root in higher maths, you have to put a plus or a minus in front of the square root. That's important. You're 100% going to forget it every time you do it uh, and you're going to have us giving you a hard time about it. So if you're someone that could just remember that, that would be really helpful. So tan x is plus or minus root 3. Okay, now we can go away and solve this. So, a uh, related angle equals, I could use my exact value triangle because it's root 3. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to use a calculator for this one. So we'll do inverse tan, we don't care whether it's positive or negative, we just ignore that, of root 3. Inverse tan of root 3 gives us 60. So my related angle is 60. We'll go to our quadrant diagram. S A T C. Now it's positive and it's negative. Both are possible. 
tan is positive in these quadrants and it's negative in these quadrants. So we actually have a solution in all four quadrants. So between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi, we will have 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions. So let's write out what they are. First quadrant is just my related angle. Second quadrant is 180 minus my related angle. Third quadrant is 180 plus my related angle. And in the fourth quadrant, 360 minus my related angle. So I have four answers. And if this had said between 0 and 360, I would be done. But it didn't say that. It said between 0 and 2 pi. So therefore, my final step is to convert those into radians. So 60 is 180 divided by what? Well, it's 180 divided by 3. How many times does 60 go into 120? Twice. So 2 times that gives me that, meaning 2 of these will be my second answer. 60 goes into 244 times. So this is 4 times 60, which is 4 pi up in 3. And then the last one, 60 goes into 305 times. So this will be 5 pi over 3. And those are my answers in radians. Okay, I'm just going to go straight into example 4.5b because this is the main event. This is the really chunky stuff now. Uh, you will love this once you master it. Example 4.5b. This has got a wee bit of everything in it. Absolutely love it. So our example will be solve three sine squared x subtract four sine x equals negative one and our domain will be between zero and 360. Okay, so we have multiple trig terms this time. This is the first time you've ever seen this an equation with multiple different trig terms and makes it all the more fun to solve. So this is us really getting into the quadratic side of trig equations now. In this example we only had the one trig term so we could pretty much just go the way we've usually done it. In this one we'd have no option to isolate the trig term, can't be done. So we have to do something sneaky. We have to treat this as if it's just a qu normal quadratic equation. And the way to solve a normal quadratic equation is to get it equal to zero. So we are going to write 3 sine squared x, subtract 4 sine x. The minus 1 will come over to this side and become an add 1, and that's going to be equal to zero. So if there are multiple trig terms, including one squared term, then we'll bring everything to the one side and get it equal to zero first of all. Okay, we're then going to do what we would usually do with a quadratic equation, which is factorise to solve. So we are going to factorise this into a double bracket. This might look a bit bizarre to start with, but I promise you'll just get used to it. Okay, so 3 sine squared x, what does that really mean? What multiplied by what gives me 3 sine squared x? Well, let's take it in its separate parts. How do I get 3? What times what? Well, it must be 3 times 1. There's no other way to get 3. To get sine squared x, what does that mean? Well, that means sine x times sine x. So to get that first term, we must have 3 sine x times 1 sine x. Okay, there's not really any debate with that. Let's go to our last term, which is a 1. How do I get 1? This times this must give me 1. Well, the only way to do it is 1 times 1. Okay, so actually all I have to do now is fill in my signs. Well, let's look at what I get when I multiply these two things together and what I get when I multiply these two things together and then figure out how I would get to minus 4 sine x. This would give me 3 sine x. This would give me 1 sine x. So I've got a 3 sine x and a 1 sine x. How do I get to minus 4? Well, I would subtract the 3 sine x 
and also subtract the 1 sin x. And a minus times a minus gives me a plus. We factorised that correctly. OK. Following the rules of solving quadratic equations then, we split and we solve. We say if this times this equals 0, then either this is 0 or this is 0. So either 3 sin x minus 1 equals 0 or sin x minus 1 equals 0. We don't need to write this 1 here, that's redundant. So there are two possibilities to find solutions to this equation. And we have to solve these two things separately. This side, isolate the trig term. Sine x equals a third. This side, isolate the trig term. Sine x equals 1. OK, it's up to you which one you want to solve first. This one's more standard. This is the thing we're used to seeing. So we will first of all find the related angle. And the related angle for sine x equals a third is 19.47. That's the one I was saying you'll get used to seeing a lot. I'm going to do my quadrant diagram over here, where I've got a bit more space. My related angle is 19.47. Sine is positive, so I will be in quadrants 1 and 2. So my solutions for this side of the equation are x equals 19.47 and 160.53. Okay, so this side I've solved, that's just a nat 5 equation, and I've solved it. No double angles to consider, no multiple angles, no compound angles, it's just done. Uh, this side's actually a lot easier to solve, and there is a rule here. If you're solving an equation, and it's sine or cos, and it equals 1, 0, or negative 1, then you can just draw a graph to figure out your solution. This is one of the obvious ones I talked about before. So if it's equal to 1, 0 or negative 1, we can simply just draw a wee sketch of a sine graph to evidence what this solution is. So a sine graph looks something like that. That's 1. That's negative 1. That's 360. OK. Sine x equals 1. What x coordinate, what angle, gives me a y coordinate of 1? Well, when the y-coordinate is 1, the corresponding angle is 90 degrees. So the only solution for this side is x equals 90 degrees. Between 0 and 360, which is what we've drawn, that is the only possibility. So the last thing we have to do to finish this is just write out our solutions in ascending order. x equals 19.47, then 90 then 160.53. And we have now listed all the possible solutions that lie between 0 and 360, i.e. all the possible solutions which are in one rotation. <laughs>